Senator, thank you so much for joining us on Airborne and Arrow TV. We've been huge fans of the extraordinary work you've done for decades now in favor of pilots' rights. As both an aviator as well as a legislator, it's obvious that you have an interesting niche and an interesting role to play in aviation. This year, you've seen some success, but as you were saying, there's still so much work to do. Tell me first, what is it that we've actually accomplished to this point, in your opinion, and where do we go? Well, first of all, Jim, you might remember, what we're talking about now is an element of Pilots' Bill of Rights 2, but we had Pilots' Bill of Rights 1. Pilots' Bill of Rights 2 came from those provisions of Pilots' Bill of Rights 1 that the FAA did not comply with or found a loophole in, uh, or and then, of course, we had new issues such as third-class medical exemption. Well, I want to make sure, and my function for this trip here is that everybody knows that when we go back into session about three or four weeks from now, that we're going to have to get the rest of those provisions done. Because most of the pilots that I run into, my good friends here at Oshkosh, think, well, that's the end of Pilots' Bill of Rights 1. It's all enacted. But it's not. It's just that one third-class medical provision. In fact, it's pretty logical that the, that the third-class reform should, was the right thing to do because we did that 10 years ago in light aircraft and if it worked there why wouldn't it work now that's now history now when i say it's history it's got one year to go there's a year for the confirmation to take place but it's all done i have little doubt in my mind <laughs> when we leave here and if we pass the rest of the provisions of the pilots bill of rights too like the total reform of NOTAMs, when they said that there had been a NOTAM on the airport that it was going to, the runway is going to be closed, I said, there wasn't. Mm -hmm. I said, tell me where there was, where to find it. I said, well, that's your problem. <laughs> well, now there's going to be one central location that everyone will know. Those are very important things. But I know my phone's going to ring and people are going to say, uh, Inhofe, we have other problems that weren't really addressed in this thing and we need to have a Pilots' Bill of Rights 3. And so you guys are going to be doing what you did before, and AOPA is going to be doing what they did before, and being kind of a central place where people can maybe come up with three or four specific things that need to be reformed, and then we'll get busy and, and uh, do the same thing again. We are heading into what is going to be a tempestuous election cycle. Um, I've never seen anything quite like it, and I don't even... Yeah. It, it, there's, no matter which side of the fence you're on, the choices are, shall we say, interesting. How does aviation fare either way coming up in November? I'm going to say something that is going to offend a lot of people, and I don't care, because this is really important. I'm a Republican, a conservative Republican. There are some Democrats who support uh, aviation. But here's the problem that you have. As a general rule, a Democrat in the House or the Senate, and I've been in both uh, the House and the Senate, uh, they support the bureaucracy. And when I was talking about the Pilots' Bill of Rights 1, uh, I'd go up to a member to get him to co-sponsor, or her, and they'd say, well, what does the FAA say about this? Well, that's every, without an exception, every Democrat that I went up to, they wanted to call the FAA and ask them, well, wait, what's the FAA going to do? We're reforming them. They don't want to be reformed. And so that's the problem. So we have the same thing is happening in this presidential election. I can assure you that if Hillary Clinton is elected, then she is not going to be responsive to aviation other than the FAA. I mean, that's just the nature of it. Now, Trump wasn't my choice. Uh, frankly, Rubio was my choice to start with, but he didn't make it. And I never met Trump until just a few weeks ago, and I went up to him. And I'm, I'm going to tell you what he said to me. I said, uh, Donald, you don't know me. He said, oh, you interrupt me. He said, oh, yeah. Yeah, you're Senator Inhofe. You've been ranking member on the Senate Armed Services Committee. Well, you also are the chairman of the committee that has oversight over a lot of the bureaucracies, such as the, uh, the EPA. And so I want to, and, and you're also active in aviation. So he wants to be consulting with me on those three issues, one of which is aviation. And I can assure you that I'll be on top of those issues and that he will be receptive because he told me he was going to be. So I'm just saying to you, and, and I know people are, won't like this idea, but if you're really concerned about general aviation, uh, Trump's going to have to be your guy. Alpha Systems AOA products are available for experimental, pressurized, and certified aircraft. President Mark Corrin notes that there is nothing more rewarding than designing a product that helps save someone's life. To see how Alpha Systems AOA technology can make you a safer pilot, check out www.alphasystemsaoa.com.
my heart was beating. I thought I was confident enough to make a safe flight. The visibility was all changing on me as I was progressing farther along in my flight. It was a wake-up call. I know that climb and drive made me a better, safer pilot. As an aviator, not just as a senator, but as an aviator, what advice do you give to this community to affect our future and build something that can last? Okay, let me mention two things. One, the Young Eagles program is the first program to go after that very population that you're talking about. I have taken up many, many, many young people in conjunction with that program. There hasn't been one so far who has not been so excited that they want to follow through with it. The second thing is, if you look at the experimental aircraft, it's something that is a great advantage because kids can know, they don't rule it out. They say, well, I want to learn to fly, that's exciting, but you're flying me around in a $70,000 airplane, I'll never have that much money. But they can't, anyone's going to be able to afford to go in and be creative and get something that flies in the air. And it's very similar to what I learned in 60 years ago. So those two programs, I think, are going to open the door. You may say that we're going down in numbers, but we're building up at the same time. You've been to Oshkosh a number of times. What changes have you seen over the years? What's your favorite? What do you bring out of the Oshkosh experience? There are four areas that I really love to go by every time. I'll go by the experimental area. I want to see what they're doing that I'm not doing and, and the creative things that come out that actually end up in some NASA improvement. They start in a garage someplace. Then you have your antiques. I love old airplanes. Then you've got your the warbirds. I've owned a, a lot of different kinds of warbirds. As I go from one of those areas to the next, I think, this is what I really come up here for. Then I'll go to the next area and say, no, it's experimentals. So I don't have a favorite, but I, that's why I spend so much time up here. It's just fun to see the advances that take place. Now, what hasn't had a lot of advances, the people have the same level of enthusiasm. These are single issue people, most of them. And when I go back there and, and I'll hear on the Senate floor saying, oh, in off, what are you worried about that? They're all fat cats anyway. They can afford anything. Well, they're not fat cats. So you come out here, you come out and you'll see thousands of people. They're medium income people, the salt of the earth. That's my message back there to bring, to try to get more members to come out here and meet these people, try to reactivate those at home. But again, seeing the same people over the last 36 years, the people haven't changed. Senator, it's always a pleasure and Without, uh, without any hesitation, i got to tell you that what you've done for aviation has been heroic, and we appreciate it. Well, it's a mission of love. There you go. <laughs> All right, sir. Thank you very much.